The big test of a truck that runs on wood gas begins on the SUNY ESF campus with Rick Bates at the wheel. I became interested in wood gasification when I was very young. When I was probably 10 years old, I saw a uh, World War II movie on TV in which the hero escaped with a whole orphanage uh, full of kids in a school bus that was powered by coconut shells. And they successfully drove from Syracuse to Messina and back, almost entirely on wood gas, according to paper and bioprocess engineering professor Dr. Klaus Dulay. We are trying to prove the sustainability of basically wood material usable for powering an engine. That could be powering an engine for, uh, for a vehicle or could be as a stationary application to produce energy, electricity, energy or heat. 20 pounds of wood equaling one gallon. The smoke comes up here, comes through here. Now all this stuff in here is basically uh, air mixer valves. Uh, so I can mix in the proper amount of outside air and it just goes into your air cleaner mm. and uh, runs, the runs the engine. They traveled north on Route 81 from Syracuse, as you can see from the video Dr. Dulay took while following the wood gas truck in their supply vehicle. Reaching Watertown, they made their way to Route 3 and overnighted in Wanakina. And then the next day, it was north to Messina on Route 56. So Rick is refueling it again. Uh, it's our third refueling stop. The system produces quite a bit of smoke when first started, but as you can see, that's not the case out on the highway. The round trip was 420 miles, and they used about one and a quarter pounds of wood per mile. A few days earlier, Rick gave us a tour of his PhD project. This is the wood fuel that the, that the gasifier uses. It's just uh, short hunks of, of branches okay. varying between one and a half to three inches in diameter. When operating the uh, gasifier, uh, I put the wood in through the top here. Uh, the reason the top is spring-loaded is because occasionally the gasifier systems have been known to uh, puff or undergo small explosions. And if you, you don't want to have it fastened down tightly because then you might blow out something important. After I have it loaded up with wood, I start a, a small heater uh, type blower that draws a slight vacuum on this whole system here. That's just to get the air flowing through the gasifier. And that's what does it. Next step I would do is to open up the air inlet. And I would light it with my propane torch. Rough equivalence uh, for wood versus gasoline, you get uh, about 20 pounds of wood equaling one gallon. The engine vacuum is drawing the smoke through the fire in reverse of the way it would normally occur. It's drawing it down through the bottom of the fire and out through this pipe here. After the smoke leaves here, the hot gas leaves the cyclone filter and goes through this pipe there into the top of the radiator. And there the gas is cooled to room temperature. It then goes through this pipe here into a big hay filter, which is in that 55 gallon drum. Um, after it leaves the hay filter, it goes out through the top there, leaves the filter through this pipe here, and goes down underneath the truck. The wood gas comes up from underneath the truck through this pipe here, goes into this 
area where it's mixed with air mm -hmm. and then is sucked into the engine air cleaner. What our research project is about is all kinds of uh, lignosolellose containing biomass, uh, run it in the gasifier and prove basically the concept and also improve actually the gasifier itself, the operation, to get basically more energy out per pound of feedstock. We are also not looking also into uh, woody biomass, we also want to look into maybe rubber tires, because rubber tires or tires are basically thrown out after their, their usage. So they're used in cement kilns for firing them, but we also, yeah, we think there also might be a viable uh, product to use in a gasifier.